For people who devote their lives to studying and preserving these types of sites, what's happening at the hands of ISIL is heartbreaking. I talked with one such person, Andrew Moore, president of the Archaeological Institute of America. It is deeply disheartening. These are wonderful sites, not well known in the outside world. They contain magnificent uh, carvings uh, and the remains of ancient uh, buildings, mostly made of mud brick. They are extremely vulnerable at the best of times, and this deliberate destruction is causing immense damage to these sites. It is a tragedy. ISIL is a group that rejects religious shrines of any sort. It condemns Iraq's majority Shiite population as heretics. How rare is it to see this sort of destruction, systemic destruction? Um, it's not that common in history, but there have been a number of examples in the past when we've seen large-scale bursts of iconoclasm. Uh, one would be the French Revolution, in which large numbers of churches and monasteries, uh, amongst other buildings, uh, chateau and so on, were destroyed. Uh, another example, perhaps well known to uh, your audience, would be the Puritan Revolution uh, in England in the 1600s, during the Civil War there, when the Puritans uh, cleansed many, many churches across England. That's why there's very little uh, um, in the way of structures inside many English churches and why there's so little stained glass because of that episode. Terrorism, vandalism, just uh, some of the threats to sites like these with historical significance. But you say agriculture is another. How so? Well, uh, industrial agriculture often inv in you involves the use of deep plows. Uh, another example would be that uh, when fields are simply leveled for irrigation. This can be enormously destructive of archaeological remains. A development uh, on a large scale across the landscape is another one. Um, I think of dam building in all the major rivers of the world. So these uh, massive dams flood hundreds of miles of river valleys. Uh, these are places where people live in the present, where they like to live in the past. Uh, and therefore, it results in the destruction of many, many archaeological sites. Earlier, you told us that you'd hoped uh, people would have more of a respect for the past, and uh, that is becoming evident today. What do you think is behind this? Uh, why do these threats to historical sites exist or even persist in some respects? I think it's an ongoing threat. Uh, there is always here an issue of education. People are sometimes not aware of the damage uh, that they're doing. Uh, I think of large-scale urban development in big cities, for example. Uh, in the past, this was not so much uh, of a threat to archaeological remains. But these days, when you build a very large building, a tall building, you need massively deep foundations, and that destroys the archaeological deposits that lie under uh, many uh, important major cities. I think of New York and London as key examples at the present. We began by talking about Iraq, um, and I'd like to finish there as well. Um, there was this film out about a year ago, Monuments Men, uh, which showed all of these guys scurrying about to mm -hmm. save these treasures. Is there anybody on the ground, uh, in your estimation, in Iraq doing the same sort of thing today? There are several uh, international efforts underway uh, in both Iraq and Syria. What's happening is that in collaboration with the legitimate authorities, uh, archaeologists from other parts of the world are getting together not so much to save things on the ground, that's extremely hard to do given the uh, nature of these conflicts, but to at least document some of the damage that's taking place and to be ready when these conflicts end to move in uh, and to begin to repair at least a little bit of the, the damage. So making a, an accurate record of what's going on using high-tech methods, particularly um, remote sensing, uh, satellite imagery, and so on, is a very important part of of, uh, of taking stock, if you like, and preparing for a better future. Andrew Moore, President, Archaeological Institute of America, thanks so much for joining us from Boston. My pleasure, Michael.